and my battery is dead on the computer. Okay, um, let's see. Can you hear me and see me? Oh, uh, can you hear me? There yes. We are. What happened? There we was, are. was that you, or because because my power shut off? Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah. I connected to a different Wi-Fi now. I hope that's better. But yeah, no, no, that's perfect. Sorry, it was me. Um, but now the picture quality of you is also better. So I guess it's also my Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, good, good. Uh, we're off grid here, so we're in a CD eco home here. So this is one of the structures we built. But yeah, we're. But I saw on. that you had the fiberglass uh, uh, dug into the ground recently. <laughs> no. What? Didn't you? Uh, oh yes, yes, yes. The yes, optical yes. fiber link. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. And this is um, just for your reference. This is where I'm at right now, and that we're on solar energy here. So, uh, ah, okay. Katarina, my partner here, she just pulled my plug accidentally. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Um, Very nice. Yeah, so you're right. It's an intense program, but that's the idea. When you prepare the kits well yes. enough, and you've got skilled people to do that, this I mean, it's a lot of work, but yes, it's doable, and we're very excited. It connects also to another aspect of our work where next year we're doing the first incentive challenge on Hero X. Okay. Uh, it's a platform here in the United States. It's a spin-off, um, HeroX.com, if you want to take a look at that. Okay. Um, but we're going to do an open-source 3D printed cordless drill challenge to do a professional-grade cordless drill, 3D printed, fully open-source, um, and put a big prize on it. And part of it, in the STEAM camps, we would train people to have the skills to do stuff like that, to be able to participate with fully open-source tool chains. Uh, so I read up on the Herex, but I guess you post the challenge and assign the prize or something? Yep, we're looking at a $250,000 prize for a cordless okay. drill. Our goal is to show the world's first example that you can develop something on a particular time frame. Our goal is to, within three years of that challenge completion, to, to dominate the market of cordless drills, which is a $10 billion market. So that's an experiment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll see. But we're we're getting ready for that. We're going to launch that September 2020. Um, mm -hmm. On that, but part of the work in the steam camps, it's it's um, part of that is training so that if someone wants to participate in a challenge, they can get the skills from the steam camp uh, using fully open source tool chains. Sounds yeah. good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of like the overview picture of where we are. Um, so tell me now maybe some feedback from you mm -hmm. and by the way yeah I mean yours uh, your project is one of the it's like one of the top of course I mean of course I've heard you guys in uh, uh, top project in terms of results and good product I mean you guys are pretty amazing I'm sure you've got some Thank challenges you. like organizationally and and the general no. like you know Plenty, the, the thing is yeah. <laughs> nobody has shown that open source can be uh, like better than the industrial system in terms of like time. RepRap has shown mm -hmm. it, but nobody noticed. But it mm -hmm. took them some time. Here we're yeah. trying, like with this particular, with the cordless drill challenge, we're trying to show, okay, you get the best quality and also do it in a time frame that's acceptable. 
And the rules there would be that everybody cooperates. Because if you look at Hero X, nobody cooperates there. It's everyone's competing. So we're saying, yeah. okay, we're collaborating. You're uploading as soon as you've got something, and you get rewarded for working together, not not separately. So that's that's our deal. But um, by the way, uh, just just to wrap up on on Axiom, how far are you guys from? I mean, what's your product schedule or roadmap look like? Well, that's a bit of a difficult topic <laughs> because <laughs> we are slightly behind schedule. <laughs> but uh, it's not going badly, I'd say. I mean, uh, we'd probably be s another half year or so until we actually have a product that's somehow ready for production. And ready for production will it also be producible uh, in a DIY setting or not really? But that's already possible right now. Can you send me a link to, to the version sure. that's doable right now? Are you guys, how many of you guys are funded right now? Funded as in actually getting paid to do anything. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. You did, you guys did have some funding before, right? Like from... Well, uh, with the crowdfunding? I think you, you did. Uh, we got an EU grant for... One and a half years for. How much was 2000. that? Like the uh, EU grant in, in total was 1.2 million euros for five participant parties, where, where we were a rather small amount, actually. Uh huh. Okay, Axiom Beta. Yeah. Let's see. Um. Yeah. So there are basically two versions, which are not clearly separated the developer kit, which is the same hardware as the Exobeta Compact, which just adds a shell enclosure around it. So, the only difference is basically the enclosure. And the hardware is done, the software is done, it's working, the enclosure isn't done, and some convenience features like uh, currently you have to operate the camera from the Linux command line, and for some reason filmmakers uh, don't like that, I don't know why. SSH is all you need, but <laughs> yeah. Um, so you've got what a USB plug into the camera? Uh, Ethernet, USB, uh, JTAG, uh, serial console, HDMI output. Um, yeah, that's it basically. Do you have? Do you sell any kits? Yes, the developer kit is already shipping in small quantities for four thousand euros. What's the baseline cost, like if you were to get all the parts yourself? Is it about 4,000 yeah. euros? Yes, but I have a link for that. Let me dig it out. Four thousand. Wow. If you scroll to the bottom, there's the DIY option, self-built, point three. Self-build, yeah. yeah. But that only includes material, no actual work time. And no tools and no materials that you need beside the actual electronics and printed circuit boards and everything. So, yeah, it's uh -huh, kind of so a high-end project. Yes, but, yes, yeah. yes. The sensor is the biggest cost. And, and the second biggest is the skeleton. And that, if someone has CNC milling capacity, they can do that themselves? Of course. So if you have a the CNC price, mill for your, your time, it would be like, it'd probably be like $30 plus your time? Yes. The okay. price is uh, some commercial service when you can order parts. That's just what we used as, as mm -hmm. make awesome. time IO. It's even linked there. I'm sure you can get it cheaper somewhere, but yeah. If you 
you do it yourself, of course. It's How simple. good is your documentation for the self-build? Is that pretty good? Mm, since so far nobody really did it, it's half finished, I'd say, because it's very complex in terms of electronics manufacturing. So you have all the printed circuit boards, all the uh, bill of materials, all the board layouts, all the placement data and everything, but there's no guide that takes you through learning to solder in that sense and learning how to place every single component and everything. Uh -huh. Once you have, so I see the big part of the different components, is it, are the interconnections also quite difficult or? Is it pretty, once you get all these components, is it pretty simple to put them together? I'm, I'm not seeing connectors in the bill of materials. Well, they should be. What uh, list do you have open currently? Uh, let, me, let me share my screen here. So here? Yes. That is, uh, let me check. Cables, yeah. Okay, there it is. It's all the cables. The now there is uh, one line per circuit board. Yep. It's a five circuit board assembly. Mm -hmm. And the X and B, the main board components, for example, contain the connectors as well. If you want to look at the files in detail, you go to X and Beta PCBs on the drop down menu at the top. PCBs. And then, for example, if you are interested in the XMP, the main board, then you click on main board, and then you get all the actual bill of materials, all the files, the documentation for that particular board, and so on. Ashpark, is that in the United States or is that China? Yes, no, that's in the United States. Are you the guy that actually designs these circuit boards, or that's someone else? That's someone else. Who is that? Herbert Petzl. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, this is uh, amazing. So you guys are looking at shipping production kits like in a half a year or so? Uh, probably. I'm very bad with these estimates, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, do you spend your full time on this or no? I mean, you got to make a living from somewhere else. How do you support yourself? I work at a university in Vienna, part time. Okay. 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 Did, Did you ever run into um, Franz Marada? Franz Marada? No. Marada. Okay. Yeah, he's, um, he's an open source guy. He's more on the social front. He's into global villages kind of stuff okay. so from the u.s or he's from, from vienna from vienna really yeah um, how's, how's he spelled exactly how's his uh, name spelled exactly and a let me see let me uh, pull you a link here this guy here um interesting because um he should meet you guys because mm -hmm. i he invited me to uh um, ah. Like, ah, of course I know him. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know his uh, surname. Okay. Yeah. Of course. How Have you, you been in touch? Uh, we met at several open source uh, meetups events already. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> um, okay, so tell me... Um, from the curriculum, um, sorry, how much have you looked into the actual looking the line items in the curriculum? Uh, let me check that yeah, out. Yeah, one so let's take a look at that. Because at this point, it's about okay, how which parts do each of us tackle? So we're really looking for very specific items uh, that we can deliver the curriculum and then teach each other about it. Um, okay. Otherwise, it would take us a year or two to develop it. We need some rapid learning. Yeah. 
So I see my role probably not as instructor in the whole camp, uh -huh. but more of an organizer of more people who could do it. I mean, we uh -huh. have a lot of people who can cover specific areas, like Herbert with electronics and soldering and everything, obviously. But also another guy maybe with more mechanical stuff. Uh, there's a guy who is also at our co-working space who builds open source uh, 3D printer control software, graphical user interfaces, and the mechanical electronic parts as well. He's building an industrial robot now as open source currently. So oh, I really? could ask oh. him. I, huh. Who is this yeah, person? I can dig out his website. It's called Machine Kit. Oh, oh sure, sure. sure. Uh, I've heard of that. That's in Vienna. Yes. It's the website, and the guy is called... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, a, that's another big player, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Alexander Rösler. He's, He's almost as famous as you guys. <laughs> yeah. No, you guys are probably, like, the most advanced open source project out there, man. Technically speaking, I mean, I think you are. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, his nickname is Machine Coder? Mm-hmm. We shared an office for some time. We worked on open pick and place uh, machine and software for some time together ah. for electronic manufacturing. Did that um, really succeed, yeah. by the way? Um, uh, open PNP is uh, very well and uh, healthy, but that's not our doing. We just contributed some minor improvements and fixes. Uh -huh. yeah. Are you guys considering OpenPMP to be part of the manufacturing tool chain for doing your boards, or your boards are too complicated? Well, that's a bit of a complex story. At first, or originally, currently, we are doing all our boards entirely by manual placing, which is very cumbersome and doesn't scale well at all, and is very error prone and takes a lot of time and doesn't really produce repeatable results. Mm. So we thought that for solving that or for the next step, we would build machines that produce or that pick and place the components on the PCBs for us, right? So open PMP, and we built a light placer. Maybe you know the kit. It's from a Finnish guy. Who light, sorry, light sorry. placer. Can you uh, put a link there? Oh, sorry, light placer. And actually, get the website out. Placer.com. It's uh, low tech, free access, or actually not free access, uh, vacuum nozzle with some software. And it works reasonably well if you don't need high speed and if you don't need high precision. And I'm not sure if the project itself is open hardware, but it's well, open PNP is, which is another software that you can use to run it as well. And he's pretty open to collaboration, but I don't know what the actual license of his kit is. Because he's selling this kit, he's producing this kit. It's very DIY inspired, but yeah, I'm not sure what the actual license is, to be honest. Uh, you're saying the author of open PNP is quite collaboration friendly? No, no, that's a different guy. Light Placer is a hardware kit. And OpenPNP is a software that's hardware independent. I also get the light up the uh, OpenPNP.org. Mm -hmm. you, so you're saying that light, the guy from Light Placer, he is very collaboration friendly? Yes. He lives in Finland, and I don't know what his day job is, but he designs, builds, and sells these kits for DIY pick and place machines. And OpenPNP is quite a large community of people who have all kinds of different machines, some even retrofitted industrial machines with their own hardware, and use OpenPNP to run them now that the software that actually part them in the 80s doesn't work anymore 
properly. Mm -hmm. So to continue the story, yeah. we built the light placer. It was not accurate enough for us. It was a bit cumbersome, not really the way to go. Uh, another colleague who we shared the office with uh, built a larger pick and place machine, like an industrial grade one, a lot faster, a lot more precise. But uh, the problem was that he created the software for it himself and it only worked with his very particular use case of how he produces or designs hardware in Altium Designer, mm. which we don't want to use, obviously. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we modified his machine to work with OpenPNP. And that succeeded, that works. And we used it for producing hardware. But in the end, we realized kind of that the placement of components is only a small part of the actual production process. So even if that works fast, and many things around it, like the paste dispensing, the stencil, how you apply the paste, the temperature, the soldering process, the reflow temperatures, the profile and everything. Mm. And we just realized we can't just master it all. It will always end up taking us so much time to make perfect. And mm. uh, since we are now in a kind of co-working space that's also part of an industrial manufacturing facility, and they're very open for collaboration and they want new projects in there to manufacture in-house and they have mm -hmm. a real uh, production line that's currently our way to go because we realized that the more time we spend with production and all the challenges it kind of entails mm. the less we actually get to work on bringing the project forward and currently we are feeling like hamsters in the wheel just mm. producing one kit after the other while nothing else is happening in the project anymore yeah so yeah that's our approach currently and once do you actually use the the Axiom Beta yourself right now? Uh, for development, yes. Not yet for actual filmmaking, but I hope that's also going to change soon. And that's yes. you're hoping that changes within about six months, hopefully? Yeah, probably. There isn't much left, but it's really hard to tell how complicated it is to get that few last steps in place. <laughs> and that is... Uh, what is that primarily? So you're working with a manufacturer right now, and that's that's the part that you're negotiating. Uh, yeah, that's the part where I'm actually not that worried about. So they do electronic manufacturing every day, so I guess they will be able to do that. Uh, the things that we actually need to do is uh, user interface. So as I said, the Linux terminal isn't that uh, <laughs> user friendly, apparently. <laughs> So we are creating a device that's called the Axiom Remote that you can plug into the camera where you have buttons, a small screen, you can adjust the parameters by turning a knob and so on. Uh, a second approach for the same problem is a web UI that you can control the camera over a smartphone or a connected device over Wi-Fi. Mm. That's all not rocket science. It just takes time to actually deal with all the things that it entails. And the third part is the enclosure. So there's already a prototype, all CNC milled, that looks good, works well, is very solid and everything. But there are some small things I still want to adapt and change until we say it's ready for everyone. And the last part of uh, what's required is uh, currently we're limited to 1080p60 output over HDMI which is enough for a proof of concept. I think someone has had a strong feedback loop here, um, which has tried probably. Maybe myself, delayed. Uh, that sounds like the volume control. Excellent. And uh, filmmakers are kind of uh, purists in sense of how the material is recorded and the quality of the image. So what we're currently working on is a USB 3 plugin module that you can plug into the camera instead of uh, HDMI. And then in a small connected PC, you can record uncompressed raw images from the sensor in its pure raw form, basically, into a raw container. So you actually save the real quality that the sensor provides in unprocessed motion picture quality. And once all these parts are in place, I think we're ready for version one, basically. 
Is the camera HD or 4K? 4K. Yeah, professional, full, yeah. Yes. And the competitors yes. for this, what is the lowest cost professional grade camera that you get on the market? Well, that's uh, kind of a difficult question because you get it from consumer level to super professional and the price span is probably a few thousand euros to, be a, to a few hundred thousand euros. And in between that, there's a lot of, well, how to say, things that you can't put in a technical specs table, like the brand name, the reliability, the color science, usability. Filmmakers are really not used to learning uh, new ways of operating a camera, so a lot of mm. uh, manufacturers build them like the old cameras in the days of analog film. I see. So, but in terms of yeah. raw performance, such as the resolution and the color quality, um, what are the comparable professional cameras that just have the basic technical specs? You can how much easily pay uh, fifty to a hundred thousand euros for what you get from us for a fraction of the price, without the openness, of course. Yeah. Um, what are you looking at as your final price for your when you ship? Uh, five to six thousand euros probably. So currently we ship the developer kits for four thousand euros and once you add the enclosure and a few usability tweaks, maybe the extra remote, five, six thousand euros I see. That also leaves in a profit margin or that's just zero profit? No, that's already calculated retail price. And what is the, at that point, what is your profit? What's your manufacturing uh, cost? Probably around 50% of that. That's good. That's good. Yes. <laughs> and are you planning on being involved in that as on the business side of that or get revenue from that in the future? Yes. I mean, we know that open hardware will not sustain itself by just selling hardware. But for now, that's the big goal for just getting the device into the hands of users. So yes. Are you expecting that it will be copied by China and stuff? Or? Mm -hmm. Expecting is probably difficult. I mean, we would love if somebody else would actually do manufacturing better than us. <laughs> but so far it's been quite difficult to achieve. So I guess they will not succeed easily, but if they do, it's okay. Of course. Yeah. Mm. And that in your view, what is the biggest challenge to a project like this? I mean, it's just the technical integration complexity, right? Mm, or Yeah, well, actually, there isn't that single challenge so far that we encountered and didn't expect to be that big. It's just the sum of the many sum. challenges. Yeah. Certification is probably a big challenge that's still coming up, but I guess we will also find a way. Technically speaking, it's just a sum of many small solutions, I guess. Yeah. How much of the technical side do you understand yourself as far as the overall architecture? Well, I try my best, but on the FPGA programming level, I kind of have to quit, I guess. <laughs> but I am a software developer myself, so I understand most of the stuff. At least when somebody explains it to me like I'm a five-year-old child. <laughs> Right, because you're you're responsible for communicating the technical how it works to people, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe you've seen on the website we have this format of the action team talks. I've seen it's the team talks. The yeah. Excellent. So that's the kind of level we try to communicate things on. Yeah. Fourteen one July twenty eight was it the last one twenty eighteen or. The last one was 14.2, if I remember correctly. That was probably still last year. Yeah, we're a bit late with the next one. We shot it already, it's 90% done. And the article is already written, so probably next week we'll release 15.1. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's excellent. Um, what would, 
would you like to cover like what questions do you have do, should we maybe go over some of the curriculum for the steam camp and see if you can help f help us find individuals to fill those roles yeah sounds good so let's take a look at that let's go back to the curriculum steam camp curriculum that's point uh, uh Oh, do you want to go through the days already? Yeah. Or the general? Yeah, do you want to do, you want to do yes. that? Day one? Yeah, sure. Oh, uh, and there's a little graphic. Uh, why don't you just take a look at my screen then so you uh, can see where yeah, I am. Yeah, you picture Rose currently, I'm afraid. Is it? But I still, I still hear you fine, so that's most Can you important. see my screen? Because I tried sharing the screen. No, I see a freeze frame of you currently. I mean, let me try to reset just for a sec here. Can you see my screen now? No, I still see the M of your uh, avatar. So. Hmm. Okay, why don't you just go to this link then? And, um, and then, yeah. yeah, open source introduction, collaborative design for transparent and inclusive economy. Yeah, uh, let's just go up up a little bit. Just the overview graphic there, the diagram. Oh, yeah. that, okay. But the idea is we've got a universal controller, which is like a standard three D printer controller. Uh, you're familiar with three D printing? You've done a bunch of that, or yes. Okay, so you got a standard controller where actually, if you click on Universal controller. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, it goes to page two or slide two, but should it link to somewhere else as well? Yeah, there's a link uh, at two to six p.m. of that day. Universal controller build. Um, yeah. But it's just a LCD plus Ar Arduino ramps and some power handling elements there, which can be reprogrammed. Yeah. But that can combined with the universal axis which is the axis system for CNC motion that is a very mm -hmm. modular kind of a thing that's scalable we're building a simple 3d printer a circuit plotter and CNC mill with a 3d printer we're getting down to printing very simple uh, the plastic parts like 3d printed motor parts enclosures for battery packs or enclosures for cordless welder or something I'll get to that. Yeah. Circuit plotter is just basic pan, which you then etch. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, yeah. very si like simple, simplest. Instead of using milling, let's try the the plotter, which can be the lowest brow way to do s simple things like an like an Arduino Uno. You can do mm -hmm. that and then populate it, solder it, which can go back into the universal controller. Um, 3D printed motors got a controller that you can also do with a circuit plotter. So the circuit plotter would be a lot for the simple electronics like a battery charger for the battery pack or maybe some s simple controls for uh, con power handling circuit for cordless welder. So do you understand the idea of the, the brain plus power elements like, mos like IGBTs for pulse width modulated control of power? In basics, yes. Yeah, so just switching, but basically the same universal controller that we have, like say you put the battery packs that we made, you make 12 battery packs, everyone makes one, that's a universal battery pack, you can stack them together to make a cordless welder, which exists. Mm -hmm. You need a simple controller to run that as a cordless welder. But but that's a thing we can do, like we, we planned it on a day four, is to put the battery packs that we make to get and put them into a... A cordless welder. Yeah. But let's let's go through more deep. That's kind of like the overview. So you've got these three machines, very simple machines that are that have interchangeable heads, from the printer to the plotter to the mill. The idea there is to make a nice simple plug and connector for the head, so it's highly interchangeable. Uh, we've actually done magnetic mounts before, which works. We can sure. do that. Um, but three different heads and then you can start making different kinds of circuits and, and devices with it. So day one is, first of all, it's the introduction to collaborative design, how to start an open source project. We talk about uh, all these different things. So, so, I mean, I could cover, write a lot of that curriculum since I'm familiar with that. 
Um, if you click on the universal axis, you see it's this very basic axis that's scalable to different sizes. We've built. Yeah, I think I looked at that in detail earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one inch yeah. and two inch. We have actually built up to the two inch. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. But we're doing just a very basic one, eight millimeter to begin with. And then the whole open source toolkits, the KiCad, FreeCAD, OBS Studio, Caden Live, um, Arduino. Uh, but the idea is that with very basic tools, you can make start making different products like the, the drone, like the Raspberry Pi tablet or, or a robotic vacuum cleaner. Uh, those are all within reach here and then we can go into making other products and, and literally with a basic tool chain you can make perhaps 80 percent of the things on amazon if you were to develop them to a high production level quality and the goal is through each steam camp to to improve the quality of the projects we make so that each camp builds upon the former uh, okay. to make it better um, but basically uh on the at noon time of the first day we learn about the universal access controller and Marlin CNC control. Then after lunch, we do the actual build, two to six. That's pretty quick. So mm -hmm. simple D3D simple, do the axis build, universal controller build. It's basically populating a 3D printed panel with a bunch of these okay. components, yeah. which is easy. Simple extruder, so we build an extruder from scratch by 3D printing and just a stepper motor. Now we don't have the simple extruder. I mean, it's very easy, but we actually never worked with the simple extruder because we always use pretty much high grade extruders so for this very simple experiment we want to do a reliable DIY build of a small extruder and then we print ourselves a little uh, 3d printed hacksaw holder as our first usable print so basically a thing that holds a hacksaw blade okay. um, uh, just a simple thing of a functional tool that we can actually use even in a workshop to cut things um, day two is making circuits so intro to the basic concepts of modular electronics. Also focusing a lot on, on modular connectors. Uh, I don't know, do you know MTA100? I just discovered these. Do you MTA. know what those are? No. What's They're the link? point. MTA. I don't know, I found the link, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. They're actually inter the, the kinds of headers that are on Arduino, but you can make them as insulation displacement connectors. So you can make these like really quickly. So that's just focusing on, on modular ways to build hardware. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I'll look okay. into that a bit more detail yeah, later. later. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, for us, the modularity is important and therefore you have to master how you're doing the connectors. Like when we disconnect the 3D print head to the pen plotter um, or the little mill, you have to m master your reliable connectors that you can also make fast because because we're designing this to be super available to build from scratch like we're invoking the idea that anywhere where you have amazon or the ups truck you can get the supplies and do it yourself so design it around simplicity which is different than axiom yeah. <laughs> though i would like to see well i would no, like to I see think the, the axiom uh, alexander from uh, machine kit, machine yeah. coder would be perfect for handling the first day, for example. Yeah. From our side, then Herbert, our electronics designer, could surely do day two if I can convince him. I mean, he loves challenges. I hope it's not too low tech for him. <laughs> well, I mean, if if they think it's low tech, the th the argument. What do you think is the argument? Yes, it's low tech, but why is this important? No, it's, uh, he loves challenges, and if it's not challenging enough, then it's probably not okay. a challenge for him. That's why, I mean, it's too low-tech, but I will try and try. No, no, but, but, but listen to this. Mm -hmm. In order to make, for example, the, the plotter very reliable, okay, that is a professional-grade engineering challenge. To do of it course. something that works, like, you know, you see on YouTube, yes but you're not going to get replicable results. So for him, the challenge is, I mean, try to convince him that, look, man, if we're going to do something that actually really works, that is like master's engineering. It's, so mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to do, get the best people to do that. So, so that's, 
that's the kind of argument we have to make. It's it's really about convincing people that the simple techniques can also be applied to professional or professional results. Yes. So that's that's that part is hard. It's not this curriculum is not easy. So I think no, I think I you, you you understand that. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try to convince. Okay. <laughs> Um, and uh, day three, the motor again, that might be uh, in line with what Alexander does, machine coder guy. Okay. Battery packs as well, I guess. Uh, Alexander. I'm not sure how much he is. Is he also in Vienna? Uh, he's in Vienna, yes. Yeah. In, in your co-working space, did you say? Uh, he's not there anymore because he switched to his home office, but he's around the corner, basically, in Vienna. Not literally around, around the corner, but yeah. He's still here and yeah. By the way, there's another, the other guy from Vienna with a social vehicle. Do you know him? The social vehicle, let me think. No, what's his name? Um, let me uh, pull that up here. No, it's not Googling for social media. No. Um, take a look at the chat box. Okay. Ah, it's already an open source ecology project. Well, it's, no, we just put it on our website. That's from him. Okay. That's, um, Harold Grundel. Ah, of course, I know him. Okay. Yes. Now he could benefit from the electric motors. See, he's he's uh, he doesn't design the technology. He's integrating technology, but but we, he'd be a great guy if we could convince him to work on a motor with us. But I don't think Definitely. he has the technical skills. But we. Do you? Can you think of anybody who would be capable of um, building a axial flux? We're talking about axial flux, the pancake style, um, brushless motors. I'd have to make some inquiries, I guess. Yeah. I mean, Alex Alexander is good with anything that's related to uh, mechanical, electronic, motion, movement, industrial control, for example. But for the Brushless motor, maybe I would have to ask our precision engineer as well. Could be an option, yeah. I'll have to check. Nice. Um, right, so a so brushless controller for... Yeah, so a little motor that when scaled down... Uh, I want to show you this link actually, what, what does exist for the okay. 3D printed electric motor. Um, take a look at the video at the bottom of this. So this is a plan that you can actually got those plans. Um, yeah, take a look at that. that that's a kit that no. already exists and we can 3D print a bunch of those parts. But look at the video at the bottom. I mean, this motor is very powerful. Um, it's a, one of these, it's like a flat pancake, but it could be scaled up and down watching it's a wooden motor <laughs> nice 500 watts and probably around 80 percent or so efficient 80 percent or more and that's just like his first prototype this guy also makes bigger motors i'm trying to get him to he hasn't responded um okay i gotta find this guy not but, bad, not bad. But it's a very simple design. Basically pancakes with flat magnets and flat coils on those pancakes. <laughs> and you can stack as many of them to scale power. And you can size it up and size it down. And the system is altogether very, very basic. Nice. But yeah, to very get nice. that to a professional a thing that actually is practical, there'll be it's billions of dollars of value. Uh, well, yeah. It's a challenge, but maybe an interesting one. Yep. Yeah, very nice.
Yep. So nice. that's uh, day three is the electric motor. That if we build a small one, so we're planning on building a small one that we then turn into a little CNC mill that we put onto our axis. So that's okay. the goal for day three. Now, the first time around that we build it, it might not be that great, but eventually it will be a really good kit that works. Mm -hmm. um, now, day four is battery packs, battery chargers, and the cordless welder by stacking a bunch of these battery packs and adding a controller that can be run off the Arduino ramps control panel. Yeah. With a small, another small little external circuit. And then the project days, those are the ones we were And the project days are using the already built stuff to build more stuff. Yeah. Um, is that correctly? Or in yes. Drone, Raspberry Pi tablet, or the screen, yeah. Yes, so uh, for example, I, I, yeah, the three printer that we build, it has to be good enough to be able to build our cases, or mm -hmm. drone parts, or the vacuum robot parts, yeah. I don't know any person in particular who builds drones so far. I'm sure Alex is interested in it, but I'm not sure if he has built some already. Raspberry Pi tablet. Well, it should be straightforward, I guess. Yeah. Drill as well. Yeah. Yeah. But all the stuff that we basically know uh, in a Steam Camp curriculum, at the very bottom, open source prior art, those are mm -hmm. the things that we know that exist that are related in some way to this. Um, yeah, but trying to really get guys who can really do well at this, so it's a really, really high, curri high, high quality curriculum. Yep. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Do you think that in Vienna people would show up if we put an event like this together? Yeah, I guess it's possible. Yes. I heard in, um, like in Germany, some rumors that there, because people are not used to paying for education, it's kind of hard. No, I don't think so. If you do anything outside the university yeah. workshops or so, everybody is paying for them. It's no, that's pretty standard. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what around one thousand eight hundred dollars? Or what's the current uh, seed price? One thousand three. Like euros, dollars. The business for plans sh shows for two weeks or for almost two weeks. Days. That's really, really cheap, actually. It is cheap, and we can possibly yeah. put that up a little bit. Um, yeah. But th those are the numbers, and 50, 50 revenue share means if twelve people show up with the current numbers, it's f about five thousand. Twenty-four people show up, it's about ten thousand. Now, if more than 18 people show up, we're putting in $2,000 for an assistant instructor. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So I think from the financial side it's doable. The question is just if inside of Vienna we will find a suitable venue, because it's yeah a big city and you need a lot of space for what we plan to do. So it might be easier on the countryside. Then again, it's still more difficult to bring people there, but that's always the case, I guess. France should probably... Um, be able to assist in that we should involve him on yes. the venue search his uh, I guess you know his project or his colleagues project the open land lab sure sure that's like one and a half hours drive from Vienna but yeah then you have plenty of space for everything I guess I do haven't you, been there but I think it's perfect for that yeah do you like open land lab uh, how, how do you think they're doing like is their project it's fully open source right for the buildings that they make the the building uh, project I actually have to look up what they are doing exactly I know the guys but not what they did so far there yeah. because uh, I was afraid that uh, not much has actually happened there. Right. By looking at, at the website, it looks like not much happened actually. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe it hasn't so much, but definitely they're doing the, the project with the open source uh, residential housing for cities. So like fully yeah, like multi-story buildings. 
Multi star. No, I'm not sure if that's not another project. No, no, it's the founder uh, of Open Land Lab. What's his name? Um, uh, Leopold. Yeah, Leopold. Uh, he's doing the the houses. Yeah. Uh, is he mm -hmm. an architect? Do you know? No, no. I'm actually surprised that he's building houses. Yeah, he's involved in a house project. Uh, let's see what. It yes. There's the project called VB House. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. but that's not his project. What, that's not his project. No, that's not his project. I know the people behind. It. So Le uh, how to put it, Leopold has a lot of plans and he's very enthusiastic and he's very active, but he doesn't have the people or the actual skills to make it happen for real most of the time from what I gather. Uh -huh. Who are the people behind so, the Vivi House? It's a project of the Technical University, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me see what the contact page says there. Okay, okay. <laughs> For yeah, some reason, yeah, it's the technic technical university and some people from there and some people from outside. Okay, okay. Because uh, when I was talking to Leopold, it sounded like he was behind this project. Uh, well, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, if you look you at, I'll, I'll post a link and you have a picture of the team on the right there. In the chat. There you go. That's the team page, so to say, and that the Nicolas? right hand thing. Yes, that's the guy I talked to. Aha! Uh -huh. So he's at the Vienna Technical TU Vienna. Yes, Technical yeah. University, exactly. In initiative for convivial convivial practices. So is that a is his group a pretty good stronghold of open source, or is he well, the only guy? No, no, I think the whole project is open source oriented, but I think they come more from the architecture and material science side. So they are not used to like software development or open hardware or something. So it's a new approach, kind of, from what I gathered. Um, do you know that if they're building, they have built a prototype, like a bigger size prototype? I know they did like a small prototype. Um, no, I think the small prototype is still the state of the art. The rest is concept. Uh huh. Do you yeah. know if they're moving forward or are they kind of stalled or? No, I'm not 100% up to date, I'm afraid. The last time I talked to them was like half a year ago, roughly. Yeah. It's quite similar to what we do with the modular panels, except yeah. the, their panels are by crane, our panels are by humans. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, the typical challenge a research project has, but once you did the prototype, it's hard to find partners and opportunities to actually build it in a larger size and scale up. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's why we're yeah. we're designing ours to be human human centric. You've seen the C pictures of the C D go home? Uh, I've seen the pictures of one of the extreme builds, if that's what you mean. Uh, I'm just gonna send you Maybe. Please do. A link to where I am calling you from right now, so I'm I'm in that little. Ah, yeah, the, the house you are in. I yeah. Skipped over it quickly, but I will look at it in more detail afterwards. Yeah. That looks beautiful. But you also built smaller concept houses, right, with the yeah. compacted earth bricks yes. and so on. Yes, we're what I saw as well. Yes, we do. Um, so the next build, we're actually going to Belize to build with a compressed earth brick. And we're adding a soil pulverizer, a soil mixer, so that we can get okay. very high control, quality control on the bricks that are stabilized. So mm -hmm. this is... Pass this on to your, <laughs> your networks. Um, 
this is the next event. Uh, you might have seen this. Have you have you seen this announcement? Is that the big countdown on the website? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I saw it. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we're doing next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Um, to wrap up the curriculum questions here, so do you have any questions on the curriculum here? Well, uh, the hard part, I guess, would be to coordinate with other locations at some point when you have a better overview of where potential events will actually be happening, time frame wise and communication wise. But that's just a note that you've probably thought of already, but that I see as next challenge. Right. The idea is who who joins the team and where? Um... Well, locally I can manage to some degree, I guess. We'll see. But you will do many events like this in parallel, right? Right. So who else is going to be interested from other parts of the world? And yeah. Time, time zone differences and all these things. Yeah, and uh, how to coordinate the contributions from the different countries and the local teams and that thing. I mean, yeah, and for that, using standard tools like uploading to the wiki and things like that, and using FreeCAD so we can share files. Do Do you guys use FreeCAD? Uh, I have to admit, I'm using OnShape, which is not free for CAD design. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so but at least they have a free plan for open source projects or for community projects. Right. Which is right. At least. But for example, in the future, if we were to run the event, I would be running one here as well. Yes. Uh, because the, the idea is that, yeah, all of us are collaborating on it. So it's a question mm -hmm. of coordinating, having a fast enough internet line to support it. Sure. Mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm open to learning FreeCAD, but for enclosure design, the complexity I'm currently doing. Uh, just found it easier, but yeah, why not? FreeCAD is the way to go, definitely. Yeah, ha have you practiced on FreeCAD or not at all? I, I uh, failed two or three times already. <laughs> when was that? When was the last time? Uh, probably nine months ago or so. Uh huh. Well, I think I could teach you the basic workflow in like an hour. I mean, that's what okay. we do in a. For me, the problem is more that I. I'm an advanced user already with CAD design. Yeah. And the way it wants you to do things is very different than the way I'm used to doing things. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I guess that's the biggest challenge. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm open for new challenges. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Great. So, yeah, yeah. So let me know. Uh, after you talk to the people, or if you want to, I mean, in other ways, just introduce uh, me well, to the people, or do you want to just well, talk to the people, or introduce me to the people you mentioned, or? I guess I will approach a few people and give them a summary of the challenge and see if they're interested, like the people I mentioned for the different parts of the curriculum, or France and Leopold for the venue, or for Open Land Lab, or for whatever they want to do. Is there a general time frame or schedule already for the preparation time or for when the event should actually be happening? The best idea is that within four weeks, two, about two, give me like two more weeks to gather everybody on a team. At that point, okay. we can have a kickoff with everybody who's on a team and we can say, okay, we got these cities and these contributions that we can take care of for the curriculum. And then we would meet like maybe prepare, do our respective parts in about two weeks. So like say I got to do the universal access, I would build that exact thing that we're going to present and I can present that in our kickoff meeting. So everybody would present their piece of content for the kickoff meeting. And then we would have time to prepare to refine that. And somewhat like in a schedule, uh, you, you probably have looked at the schedule there. It's a rough schedule, but um, uh, the link, can you share the link again? Yeah, if there is a sketch already, let me see. I mean, there's the three month schedule for the preparation time. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but uh, when is the actual start of that, so to say? Or yeah, is it already I think dated? Unfortunately, the week 
week zero is two weeks from now. Okay, that's very soon. So the camp would actually still happen at the end of this year, roughly. Yes, if possible. If we, so it's, okay. it's September, October, November. It would realistically be... Wow, we're getting close to Christmas. Yeah, that's probably a bit of a tricky time for such an event. Yeah, might have to be. Realistically speaking, it looks kind of hard for, you know, because around that time, if we could pull everything together uh, by, yeah, no, that that gets too tricky. I don't think it. Do you think? Uh, what what do you think it would be the latest that it could be in this year? Mm. Hard to say. November, probably. Yeah, end of November. But that's but that's that's very soon actually. That's too soon. With all the preparation time yeah, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Probably spring is more realistic. Yeah. Sounds like spring might be more realistic. Yeah. Okay. We'll work with what we we can. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but the people I contact, I will briefly uh, explain at the end of this year or the start of next year. That's the yeah. rough schedule of yeah. when the event will happen. Okay. Yeah, right. that's that's right. We can't do anything about it. The year's yeah. kind of slipping away, but it's it's good to uh, good to catch up with you. We never talked before, but but that's, uh, that's good. we should check in from time to time on the state of open source, and uh, hopefully uh, in September twenty twenty there'll be a major movement towards open source economics happening with our okay. incentive challenge. Uh, we'll nice. see. Did you... Uh, There's the Open Hardware Month in October by the Open Source Hardware Association. It's also great. Have you heard of that before? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yep, yep. Excellent. Yep, great, great. Okay. Perfect. Right, then so I'll uh, write a brief summary in the next few days, I guess. Maybe I'll share it with you first, so you can go over it and see that I didn't make any mistakes or missed anything. Yeah, yeah, and please that do. That would be my my uh, base foundation for approaching more people, I guess. That would be great. And uh, That's do you use Google Docs? Yes. If you can, please start that doc and just share it with me, and maybe... We I hope you added that. Will do. Okay. Excellent. Okay, Ready? Sebastian, thank you for your time. Many thanks for everything and see you soon. All the best. Thank you. We'll we'll be in touch. Bye bye. Yes. Bye bye.